home church. Loop church, at home, with your families. How cool is this? Uh, we're gonna get straight into worship, real fast. Wanna tell you something though. Worship at home doesn't have to be weird. So when you're worshiping at home, you got a couple options. You can get up, stand up, you can uh, uh, jump up and down, raise your hands, do all of that kind of like uh, uh, moving around, jump and shaking with your family. Or you can contemplate the lyrics. It's okay to, to have be still with God, even though the music might be upbeat. You can think about these lyrics. So I'm gonna give you that option. Do one of those two things. You ready? Let's worship.
God's love is so powerful. It literally has the power to change our life. And my prayer today, together, all of us in this room would encounter Christ in a new way, in a way that we have never encountered him before, realizing his forgiveness, realizing what he has done and letting that truth inspire us to live that out. So let's think about that together as we worship. As I fall away, leave. Feel my heart as it's racing down the path you set for me. When the road feels unending, there's a promise you reveal. When these days leave me empty, you sustain me even still. With every breath, you are reviving. Take me, won't let anxiety face me Whatever comes, count me in, count me in Oh, I, even when my legs are weary I'm not gonna give up that easy Whatever comes, count me in, count me in Round version of singing songs to God. Um, I hope you got a lot out of that. That was a lot of fun. Um, so we're gonna go straight to the loop show now. Ricky and Jamie wanted me to ask you a question. What is your favorite part of the Bible? Doesn't necessarily need to be a specific verse. I'm thinking like big picture, like I love the poetry or I love Proverbs because then I get these cool little quotes that I can throw it at my friends. Or for me, the history is really cool. I love going through and like hearing about these battles and how God came through for these people. There is a whole lot to the Bible for us to learn. And today in the Loop Show, we're gonna explore some of that. This week on the Loop Show likes you. Bones, stingrays, and biblical proof. Hang on, on for, for the, the loop. loop. Three, two, one. Oh. oh my gosh, that scared me. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie, welcome to The Loop Show Likes You. Did you know we like you? I think they do. Do you? Do you? Do you? Well, we do, we call this your show because The Loop Show Likes You is fueled by your postcards. We should really shorten that to L-S-L-Y. Totally. Mm. Here on the L-S-L-Y or Lissy, we get to know you, we get to try your challenges and answer your questions. We asked you what's something that we should know about you. Okay, so this says, 
I have two extra bones in my ring finger. How does one figure that out? It's what it says. I think I have four, uh, one, two, I think four? How many are you supposed to have in your, in your ring finger? Three? I don't know, man. Okay, I have one from Anna, and it says, I don't like chocolate. How can you not like chocolate, Anna? Yeah. Chocolate's the best! I'm so sorry. Me too. Or actually, you know, maybe this is good. Maybe there are multiple Annas who make more chocolate for us. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Since Anna's not eating the chocolate, we get to eat the chocolate she's not eating. Yeah. I like it. Okay, uh, this one says, I know what you're doing and I know who you are and it won't work. That's Malachi. Malachi. Um, I... Are you, are you okay, Jamie? Do you think they're watching us through that TV back there? That TV's always on and never playing anything. Oh, Malachi, do you know? Wait a second. You know about the TV? Malachi? Malachi? Okay. Okay, uh, Malachi, you have, uh, I need another card. I, I need to think about something else. Okay, how about a pregnant stingray? I'll take it. <laughs> I have kissed a pregnant stingray. Not me, but the loop student. That's pretty cool. They look pretty slippery. Wait a second. Stingray. Sting operate. Wait. Is this a message? <gasps> Wait. I know what. Malachi. Malachi. All right, send us another letter, Malachi, because I think you might be onto something. The pregnant stingray. Stingray. Ray gun. Sugar Ray. Mm -hmm. Hit band in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, hit band, and it's the lead singer is a man, so hit man. What? What did? What do you even say after something like that? Uh, I guess let's go to a clip. I know the Bible is one of the most important and influential books of all time, but what is it exactly? Yeah, some people talk about the Bible like it's a big rule book that fell out of heaven. Other people use the Bible like a textbook written to answer all of our questions about God, or like a big collection of inspirational one-liners. Here's the thing, the Bible isn't written as a rule book, or a theology dictionary, or even as a collection of inspirational writings. Then what is the Bible? Well. Open up the Bible to page one and read the first few words. In the beginning. Now, turn to the last chapter of the Bible where you can read this. And they reigned forever and ever. Okay, so the Bible is telling a story from beginning to end. Yes, it's an epic narrative about how God has made humans his partners to take care of the amazing world he created. It's about how we've ruined that partnership by rebelling against God and how he is restoring us and our world through Jesus. So an awesome story, but there's a lot going on. Inside the Bible are a bunch of different books with their own stories and characters. Here's what's so amazing. Every book has been designed to be a part of and enrich the overall storyline. And knowing how to read the Bible helps us not to get lost. There are also important themes repeated throughout the entire biblical story. A big theme in the Bible are the covenants or promises that God makes with people. And the hope for a human hero who will defeat evil. Every theme comes alive in the story of Jesus. There are also a lot of strange words in the Bible. Words I don't really know. When we take the time to understand those strange words, we discover ideas that help us understand the overall story of the Bible. Reading the Bible takes work. It's not a book that just gives you all the answers right away. The Bible takes you on a journey. I love journeys. The Bible is a work of literary genius. And the more we read and study God's word, the more it changes the way we live and how we think about everything. The Bible is a one-of-a-kind book that will challenge you and change you and takes you on an epic journey. If you're wanting to start reading the Bible, you should probably start in one of these four books from the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. They're all about Jesus' life, where he went, who he saw, what he did, miracles. Say I want to start in Luke. You're just going to go over here to the books, scroll to which one you want, pick the chapter. You probably are going to want to start at the beginning of the chapter or else it might get a little confusing. But once you've read one of those, you can read the other three, maybe read some more of the New Testament, some of the Old Testament. Don't worry, this isn't like a full-on Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter book. It's just like a short chapter book. And if you ever get to any confusing part, like this whole line of a family tree, Abraham was the father of Isaac, Obed was the father of Jesse, Jehoram was the father of Uziah, 
Uzziah. <laughs> I have no idea. Just ask yourself this question. How is what I'm reading pointing me to Jesus? Because I know there's a lot of confusing things that may seem really unnecessary in the Bible, but they're all there for a reason. If you really think about it, all the way at the beginning, it starts with Abraham, who's pretty important in the Bible. And if you scroll all the way down to Jesus, it kind of shows us he was human. He was a man. He had parents and he had grandparents and great grandparents and great great grandparents. I don't know what these little three text bubbles are. So basically, it's just the tips button. It'll show you descriptions or definitions or if it was in the Old Testament. Just kind of a little helpful guide, if you will. All these words are in red, so you can tell that Jesus said them. The Bible can help guide you, give you perspective, and surprise you. The words of Jesus give you a solid foundation. Jamie, what's your favorite book in the Bible? Hmm. I like the book of James. Number one, because I think it's really cool that James is, is Jesus' brother. I just think that's awesome. That's yeah, great. and you know how sometimes like you talk like your siblings? So sometimes when I'm reading the Bible, I also think that James is reflecting how Jesus talks too. I mean, I know we hear him in the Bible too, but it's just a different brotherly perspective. I've never looked at it that way. Yeah, yeah, so that's number one. But the other reason that I really like it is because it's a really encouraging book because James is writing to people who are going through a really hard time. So whenever I'm going through a hard time, it encourages me. That's nice. Yeah, how about you? I'd have to say the book of Romans because uh, it's basically a book that tells you like how to be a Christian and how great God's love is. And I, I really like it. Every time I read it, it feels like I'm finding something new and also something very convicting. So I like it. That's good. That's important to find things that are convicting too. Yeah. Love it. And as you can see, the Wheel of Cards is here today. Woo! So these are your challenges, and we're gonna spin the wheel and pick one and then complete it today. Now I'm a little nervous because one of those cards suggested that we throw our phones off the roof. What? That's intense. Is it on here? Only one way to find out. Spin that wheel! Spinning, 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 spinning. spinning. Sun. All right, this one? Okay, great. Oh no, I broke the What have wheel. you done? Uh, okay, it says <gasps> blind folded face painting challenge. Yay! Oh, oh okay. thank you. Oh my. All right. Um, oh, look. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to face paint uh, each other's faces with one of these lovely little designs. Looks like a vampire spider. It's not even just a spider, but it's a spider with teeth that look like a vampire. Yeah, and that looks like a vampire balloon. Okay. All right, so. I'm gonna be blindfolded and I'm gonna be painting it on his face. That's the plan. So I'm gonna take my right? glasses. Yes. Okay. Jimmy's memorizing her color palette. I am, I'm trying. It, did the timer go? Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Now? Did you say no? Did you say now? Time starts now. Okay, where's your face? Right there. All right, so, do you guys want to guess what, I, <laughs> what I'm doing, or do you want... <laughs> where's your eyebrow? <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay, go around the eyebrow. Uh, think, oh, was that too close to your eye? Okay, I think that this is green, and so I'm gonna do some grass. Wait, grass? Some grass. Okay, okay, so I did some wings above. And now I need to do some wings below. Where's your nose? <laughs> Found it. Okay, because there's the body. But I hope that's the red. Okay, because I need to really solidify the wings. Oh man, there's like a, oh, there it goes. There's like um, a trail, pink trail. <laughs> oh no. And then uh, the other wing. Did I get the wing? We'll see. Okay, how, I'm not sure I have How do I look? Oh, I do. Oh, <laughs> it looks like. Somebody squirted mustard and ketchup all over your face. Oh, good. Oh, how did I get on your ear? That's funny. How did it get, what? Uh, oh, thank you. You want to take a look at what you look like? Yeah, sure. Ah, oh, boy. Yes. Look at that. <laughs> okay, give me like 30 more seconds and it could have been uh, clearly a butterfly. <laughs> this, this is a this is a statement. This was still really fun though, even wow. though it's not quite a butterfly. Okay, Jamie, get ready. Okay, all right. That is definitely Paint. It's actually scarier being on this side because you can see yeah. what they're doing. Okay, let's see. All right, great. All right, okay. so, okay, good. Oh, right. using your hand as a, right. uh-huh, oh. <laughs> so what we're gonna do, Jamie, is we're gonna, yes. we're gonna make a happy, happy little rainbow. Oh, okay. This rainbow is gonna be uh, in the sky. It's gonna have a nice little, oh. you know, <laughs> God's promise. Into my mouth. God's promise and everything. <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh. It, it, it just got done raining. Yeah. You know what else happens after rain? Um, no. And, but you know what? I like rain because we get flowers. Do you always paint in a southern accent? 
flowers to get, get the water that they need. God provides. God provides. I'm assuming that's yellow because that's going to be the sun. <laughs> that little sun. So what we have is we have a sun, we have a rainbow, and we have a nice little red balloon right here. <laughs> Tickles. Just floating up into the sky. And then we're just going to have that little balloon just have a nice little trail right down there. <laughs> now, now what we're going to do yeah. is we're just going to add just a couple of little happy little elements. We're just going to create the world as a whole right there. <laughs> and that is what art is made of. Mm, thank God, you. God's plan right here. Let's see. Let's take a look. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I look great? JB, you look wonderful. <laughs> Take a look. Okay, this is actually much, like even with where I thought the colors were, this is yeah. way more difficult than it looks, especially when you are blindfolded. I think so too. But it's a ton of fun. Yeah, I, I really like it. I like the the spirit of what I was going for. Absolutely, especially yeah. this over here, the blending that you did. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I, Monet is, is what it reads to me. Oh, very nice. You ever seen lily pads? Doesn't look just like that. So that was a super fun challenge. Thank you for suggesting it. We love your challenges on The Loot Show Likes You, but we also love your questions. Mm -hmm. And I have to warn you, <laughs> this question is, uh, it's capital B big. Okay, here we go. How do we have proof that everyone in the Bible existed? You Great ready? question. Yeah, let's get into it. How do we know that everyone in the Bible actually existed? That is a fantastic question. But before we answer that question, let's just talk about the Bible. What is it and how does it work? Because I think so often what we can do is we can misunderstand what the Bible is meant to do and how it's meant to be interpreted. And so uh, oftentimes what I see people try to do is treat the Bible like it's some sort of textbook with the answer to every single one of our questions or a rule book with all the rules to life where if we just do the right things and everything will work out great. Or maybe it's a book of inspiring quotes that we're supposed to read so that we feel better when maybe we're feeling bad. And while the Bible includes all of those things, it is so much more than any one of those things. Uh, the best way I like to think about the Bible is that it's a story that imparts wisdom and it leads us to Jesus. And when we see the Bible in that way, what we'll start to do is to understand how God uses this word, this his word, the Bible, to not just inform us, but to transform us into the people that we were created to be. So with that kind of foundation, let's talk about the specific question of how do we actually prove that everybody in the Bible really existed? And the short answer is we can't, right? Because A, we weren't there. B, we don't have a time machine to go back and see it. And C, they didn't have video cameras, so they didn't actually record these people doing these different things. So what we have to do then is start to look at the evidence to say, all right, is it likely that these people really did exist? And when we look at the evidence, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that there are a lot of real and factual things that took place in the Bible. The most important person though to look at is the person of Jesus, because as Christians, what we believe is that our entire faith is based on the event of Jesus coming back from the dead. And the beauty is that when we take a historical approach to the resurrection of Jesus, to his life and his death, what we find is that every ancient historian agrees that Jesus lived and he died. And when we look at the evidence, we start to see that there's good evidence to show that Jesus really did come back from the dead. Some of that evidence is the fact that there were different people who lived with Jesus in the same time as him, who wrote down their accounts of what happened with Jesus, things that he said, he did, and he taught. They talked about his death, his resurrection after the dead. Some of those people are Matthew, who was one of Jesus' earliest followers. A guy named Mark, who spent time with Peter, another of Jesus' followers, who wrote down his account. Luke, who talked about investigating the events thoroughly. So he did the research to figure out, okay, what is this Jesus guy all about? He interviewed different people. He asked a lot of questions and then wrote that down in what we call the Gospel of Luke or a guy named John who at the end of his life, after having spent time with Jesus, felt like it was so important for him to tell other people the truth about who Jesus was that he wrote what we call the Gospel of John. Not only that, there's a guy named James who was actually Jesus's brother <laughs> who was not a Christian until after Jesus's death. So what that means is that James didn't believe that Jesus was the son of God until after he died. Why? Because he saw Jesus after his death. He saw him after the resurrection to the point where we have writings from James today. It's called the letter of James, where James calls Jesus his brother, Lord. <laughs> he literally says that my brother is my Lord. Why? Because his brother came back from the dead. And then finally we have Paul who wrote a ton of different letters that we can find in the New Testament. He wrote the majority of actually the New Testament today and what's crazy about Paul is he went from one day killing Christians to the next day starting churches. 
Why? Because he had an encounter with Jesus after Jesus' death over and over and over again. There were these people who had this encounter with Jesus after his death that convinced them not only is Jesus real, but Jesus really did do what he said he was going to do. He came back from the dead. And so it leads us to recognizing that the most important question is not, is everybody in the Bible actually true or real? Did they all exist? Because we can't prove all of that. What we can do is look at the evidence and come to the conclusion that Jesus really did do what he said he was going to do. He lived, he died, and he came back from the dead, which leads to the most important question being, who is Jesus to you? Because that's the question that changes everything. So this is what John writes in his gospel account. It's in chapter 21, verses 24 and 25. He says, this is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. And we know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. And if every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Did you know that there are official Loop Show Bible plans on the YouVersion Bible app? If you don't know what a Bible plan is, it's a mix of clips, verses, challenges, and prayers designed specifically for you. So if you have a phone or a tablet or a computer, ask if you can download the YouVersion Bible app. And start a Bible plan today. Also, if you have a challenge or a question, or if there's something we should know about you, let us know. Yes, yeah, send us a postcard. We'd love to hear from you. The Loop Show likes you. Say it loud. Enjoy, Enjoy the ride! ride. So we were categorizing these alphabetically or chronologically? Absolutely, I already have it alphabetized. Oh, okay. Just like we talked about today, the Bible helps us build a strong foundation. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for the Bible. Thank you that it's your gift to us, that we don't have to be alone, but you have given us directions for how to live a great life and connect with you. Thank you. As we continue on in an attitude of prayer with heads still bowed and eyes still closed, maybe for you, maybe you still don't get it. Maybe you're wondering, why is the Bible so important? Well, it's so important because it's the story of God's love for you and for me. It's the story that you're not alone. You have a creator who loves you and he loves you so much that he sent his son, Jesus who died on a cross for you and for me, taking the punishment of our sins so that through Jesus, we could have a relationship with God. We could know our Creator. We could know and be a part of God's story. The Bible is inviting you to be a part of the greatest story ever told where you can have access and a relationship with the main character. For some of you, you recognize that's what I want. That's what I need. I want God's love. I want a relationship with Him. I'm ready to give my life to Christ. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand right now. That's awesome. As we pray with those who are making that decision, I want you to pray out loud and together with me. Dear God, I recognize that I'm broken, but I need a Savior. Jesus, I believe that You are the Son of God that you came and died for me. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life, to make me brand new. Thank you for your forgiveness and thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just made that decision, I'm so proud of you. It is the most important decision you could ever make. And I wanna let you know, it is a big deal. This is a big thing and we're celebrating here with you. So don't keep it to yourself. Tell a parent, tell a leader you trust and let us get excited for you and the decision you just made. You guys, if you made that choice today, I'm so blooming excited for you. That is so great. If you're not with an adult right now, I want you to find an adult you trust and tell them. They're gonna help guide you. They're gonna help walk you through this because it doesn't end here. It's gonna keep going. If you're watching today's episode and that just sparked some new ideas, new questions, or like you have this fact about you that you just want the world to know, if you could go into the comments, you can go uh, in the comments of this video if there's that option. You can also go on YouTube and find Loop Show on YouTube. Go to any video and write in a comment a cool fact about you or a question that you have. Let us know. Like you, you don't know. We could do a Loop Show Likes You about your question in the future. So that's it for the Loop Show here, but it's gonna continue at home. We're gonna put some questions on the screen. I want you to talk about them with your family. If, you're, if there's not an adult or, or a brother or a sister nearby or a friend, go get them. Talk about these questions. See you later. Oh, sorry, they're coming. <laughs>